come on, why don't you show some sign that you're glad that the Lord woke you up this morning. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for another day, God. Come on, clap those hands like you mean it. Open up your mouth and begin to set the atmosphere with your worship. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Come on, lift up those hands right where you are. And just begin to worship the Lord with the fruit of your lips. God, we thank you for this day. God, it's a day that we've never seen before and a day that we'll never see again. So today we give this day back to you. It belongs to you. All glory, honor, and praise belongs to you. We woke up this morning just to tell you thank you. Thank you, God, for waking us up. Thank you, God, for being our King, our Lord, our Savior. Thank you for leading us and guiding us. Thank you, God, for giving us the activity of our limbs this morning. God, we are breathing on our own this morning, and we thank you. We don't take it for granted this morning, God, that you've given us, Father, everything that we need, and we give you praise. Come on, for a few seconds, just begin to worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Come on, don't clap your hands, but open up your mouth. God, we bless you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you, Jesus. Have your way in this place. Bless the person that will bring the word today, Father. Let it come with power and conviction that will change minds and soften hardened hearts today in the name of Jesus. We are trusting and believing in your word, God, because we can't make it through without it. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. So God, we lift you today in our praise and in our worship. And we allow you to have your way in this sanctuary. And we say today, have your way. Have your way, Jesus. In all these things, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. For it is due your name. And we tell the Lord, thank you and amen. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Why don't you shake someone's hand next to you and say, let the glory rise. Come on, turn to someone else and say, let the glory rise. Yeah. Let me see everybody just put your hands together just like this. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Come on, I want to see you put your hands together. Come on. Everybody put your hands together Come on and clap your hands Here we go Say, let the glory of the Lord rise among us Let the glory of the Lord rise among us Let the praises of our King rise among us Let it rise Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let me see you put your hands together. Come on. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Come on, I feel the Lord in here. Come on, somebody just begin to put your hands together. Everybody lift your voice and say it together. Let the glory of the Lord say. Glory of the Lord. Rise among us. Come on, let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Rise. Let the praises of my King. Rise among us. Oh, oh, oh. 
and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face then I'll hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal the land and so today oh God as we come into your presence we focus on you we turn our attention to the God who is able to heal the land we acknowledge oh God that there are fractures and there are tears that are among us father some of it just has happened because life has happened to us Someone this week, oh God, lost a loved one. Someone is dealing with a loved one being in a hospital room. Someone's bedridden, oh God, and they're watching church via streaming faith. 
Today, oh God, we ask that because you're sovereign, that you're not, we thank you that you're not just here in this sanctuary, but you can go through the computer and you can meet them right where they are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, that there's somebody who's under the sound of my voice, that even though their body is here, their mind and their soul is not here. Right now, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would penetrate the very inner recesses of their soul. God, we need you to meet needs in this place today. Father, we don't forget about those who are bereaved. We don't forget about those who sent loved ones home to be with you. Father, we know that death has no sting and grave has no victory. And so we give you thanks and praise that Jesus is our resurrection. Today, oh God, we ask that you would comfort the brokenhearted. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, even as we pray, God, and you bring people to our mind, give us words to speak into the lives of people. Help us to be ministering presences. God, we pray for those who are under the sound of my voice who are struggling with economic difficulty. Father, people who are on the end and on the verge of having to make a decision. We pray, O oh God, that you would be who you say you are. You would be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their pathway. Father, we thank you that even though we traffic through this world, we have somebody standing by our side helping us to make every decision. Oh, we thank you that Jesus is our high priest and he is our intercessor. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise today because even in the valleys of life, even when we're up against the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with us. You're right by our side, God. You're whispering in our ear. You're telling us which way we ought to go. And we say thank you. We thank you, God, that you are our shepherd and we shall never, ever, ever want. We are sheep of your pasture. We give you glory that we're never alone. No, we're never alone. And so today, as we are in your presence, as we, as we focus on you, we praise you because we know that you're right by our side. We give you glory because there's nobody like you. Father, we searched all over and we can't find nobody. We looked high and low and we still can't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. And God, we give you praise. Why? Because you're worthy of it. Oh, you're worthy of it, God. In good times and bad times, you're worthy. In difficult times, you're worthy. Oh God, we might have forgot about it, but right now we declare, God, you're worthy of our praise. Oh, we praise you because you inhabit the praises of your people. And God, what we need to, in order to go through every season, is not more stuff, but we need more of you. And so right now we loose our neighbor's hands and we give you the glory that you deserve. Oh, because you're worthy. Oh, come on, I need about a hundred people to throw your head back and shout, you're worthy. Come on, tell him he's worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Come on, great Island Cathedral. Put those hands together and give God glory in this place. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And amen. amen. Create in me a clean heart yeah. and purify me. Purify me, create in me a clean heart so I may worship thee. Oh, create in me a clean heart and purify me. Purify me, create in me a clean heart so I may worship thee. Come on, lift it up and say, Create in me a clean heart and purify and purify me. Come on, everybody, listen, create in me, say. So that I, so I may Come on, do you want a clean heart today? Come on, sing it again. Create in me, create in me a clean heart. Spirit 
and everybody who feel that you know what God has done for you. And so you just lift him up. Give your neighbor a holy handshake, a holy hug right now. Tell a neighbor, if you knew where I came from, you wouldn't even believe that I'm here right now. Hallelujah. Anybody been so blessed, you just need to give God a shout out of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. This morning, as we make ready for our sermon, we invite your attention to two passages of scripture. Number one, the gospel of Matthew, the 16th chapter, reading from the 21st verse through the 23rd verse. And secondly, from the book of Acts, reading from the second chapter, verse 38 through verse number 41. Our text for this morning. Make ready for the preaching of the word. Amen. Following this sermonic selection. <laughs> Yes, to 
yes for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what the struggles, the difficulties, I can still call on God. And I still say yes. He says yes to me. He blesses me. He responds to me. He hears my plea. He is God all by himself. And that's the reason I cannot help but acknowledge who he is in the moments of my life. No matter how difficult things are, I know that God still hears my voice. And God still is a yes God. Amen. Our scriptures this morning, once again, from the Gospel of Matthew first. And we read from the 16th verse, I'm sorry, the 16th chapter, 21st verse. From, the time, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou hast savoreth not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And then let's go over to the book of Acts. And in the book of Acts, let us look at Acts 2, beginning at the 18th verse. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Amen. We do give God thanks for a word this morning. I'd like to preach from the topic, Building Christian Character for Leadership. Building Christian Character for Leadership. To thee, God, we give thanks and praise. We honor you for you have given us another blessed day, another blessed opportunity, and another time where we might call sinners unto repentance. Preach your word so that people might know that in the midst of their depression, in the midst of the struggles that they face in life, you are still God, and you still have the ability to work miracles in our lives. Pour out your spirit upon your people on this day. Consecrate us anew. Send us out of this place better than when we came in. Help us, O oh God, as we receive this word to become better disciples, to be better followers, to be better leaders, to be people who understand fully that our commitment and responsibility to you supersedes any other thing in the world. And now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, unto thee I pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. You may go to your seats this morning. Amen. Many of us are in places, in positions, where we have relationships with people whom we work with, people who we live with, people all around us. And many times we find ourselves wondering why it is those people are able to be where they are. We raise questions about them because on a daily basis we have to interact. And in our interactions, we sometimes find that some of the folk that we are forced to be with are people who have serious character flaws. There are some folk sitting in this room 
who know that there are some people in and around you, whether on your job or in your church or in your choir or in your dancers or in your usher board or on the students board with you, and you would wish and hope that they don't show up today. I wish they would either stay at home or when they come to church, just shut up. <laughs> Jesus is in an interesting place this morning. He has just called 12 men that he did not know. And in the calling of those men to become his disciples, he brought them together and began to teach them all that they should know in order that they might fulfill the purpose for which God has given him the message to bring them and to deliver them to that place where they are able to fulfill the commitments in ministry that God has for them. But all of us understand that everybody who comes into ministry, everybody who comes into the church, everybody who is a leader, is not necessarily the same as somebody else. And so among these 12 people come one person whose name is Peter. It would seem an any kind of evaluation that after you have read about Peter, studied his life, you would have to raise the question in the, particularly in the gospel period of his life, uh, why does Jesus allow this guy to hang with the disciples? There is something about him that disturbs the mind of the average person. Here is a man who is among 11 others, but it seems as if he is the only one who has the nerve to speak out or for or against anything. This man called Peter, called by the Lord to be a disciple, having some character flaws, somewhat erotic, somewhat caught up in himself, somewhat being the one who knows it all. Anybody know about know-it-all people? He, he, he just seems to be the person that has to answer everything. He, he's, got, he's got a word for everybody, including a word for Jesus. Peter, called by God, to be a disciple. And yet every time you read another thing that he has said, you can't help but ask the question, why does Jesus keep him around? He's got 11 other people, 11 other people who can do what Jesus tells or asks them to do without having a retort, go about doing it and rejoicing in being able to do it. But, but Peter doesn't just say, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Peter, Peter has to have a response. He has to say something to Jesus about what Jesus has asked him to do. You know who I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, you might be who I'm talking about. It is impossible to have a church of this size, 20 some thousand people on the road, 6,000 some people come to church between these three services on Sunday. You, you got to know there's somebody like that. You know that person you wish didn't show up today? You don't wish them dead, but close enough to death. <laughs> Just showing up, they get on your nerves. Don't act like you don't know about it. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so I keep on reading about Peter. And I cannot help 
with my psychology degree, but believing he is narcissistic. He ain't going to let nobody outdo him. Nobody's going to be able to stand in front of Jesus before he has his own say. In many ways, he is messed up, but he's a disciple. Now, one would think that if this is Jesus, and he's allowing this guy to do all of this talking. And in many instances, the conversation that he presents is negative. And it flows against what Jesus is teaching. But Jesus still allows him to be one of the disciples. He doesn't have a vote and say, throw him out. He doesn't say that Peter's gotten on my nerves to the degree that I cannot tolerate him any longer. He doesn't say that Peter needs to just go somewhere else, do something else, because he's just not a proper fit for what we are expecting to achieve. Why in the world would Jesus keep Peter around him? On one occasion, when he should have been performing, he was asleep. You know how those folk on your job take those naps. Not you, but <laughs> some of those folk on your job who take their nap in an untimely moment. When you need them most, you can't find them. When they're supposed to be performing, you don't see them. But when they show up, they have a lot to say. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you begin to listen to them. And then you fall asleep on your assignment. Why does Jesus keep Peter around? How can you keep somebody around when you have just made a prophetic statement and then Peter, Peter comes and pulls you aside and rebukes you? Didn't rebuke another disciple, but he rebuked Jesus. And he did it because he was not in accord with what Jesus was teaching him. Here comes Peter, taking Jesus aside, rebuking Jesus, his leader, the one who God has sent so that he might be able to save the world. But Peter is saying to him, Peter is rebuking him, because he does not accept the teaching. Some folk are unteachable. Some folk you want to see change could change, but they won't change because they've developed habits that have become a part of their character and the definition of who they are. So they would rather remain the way they are than put themselves in a position where they might be able to grow, develop, and to attain the character that is necessary for them to have successes in life. A whole lot of folk lose jobs because they don't know when to speak and when to be quiet. A whole lot of folk lose out on their potential gifts because they talk too much. Or as the songwriter said, it worries me to death. You don't have to be the person who have to speak out on everything. Sometimes you've got to understand that other folk have a mind 
Other folk have gifts and abilities. You're not the only person that the Lord has called. But the thing that we realize about Peter is that God keeps him around for a purpose. Everybody in church doesn't come and join the church because they're already saved. Everybody in church don't join church because they are perfect. Church is not a perfect place. It is a perfecting place. A part of the role of ministry is to perfect, to help you grow, to help you develop, to nurture you in such a way that you are able to do what God has called you to do. But Peter kept on. One instance after another. Matthew 16, 22, he rebukes, he rebukes Jesus. Later on, he comes to a point where he responds to what Jesus is doing, but he raises a question, and his question is, Lord, we've given up everything to follow you, but what will we get in return? Too many folk in the body of Christ are so concerned about what they are going to get in return that they don't have a full knowledge of really how much God has already given to them. Somebody say amen. Those are the kind of folk who just out to get something. That's the kind of folk that destroys the church. Amen. They see the church as nothing more than another entity that is no different from any other one that they know out in the world. So, so Peter wants to know now, I gave up my job, I was fishing, I was making a living, I was doing well. Now I'm out here with you, Jesus, and I don't have anything. What are you going to give me for making my sacrifice? And Jesus listens, and he does not say, Peter, get out. Doesn't say Peter quit. Doesn't say Peter you got to leave because you're creating too much of a disturbance. He lets him stay. Why is Jesus letting Peter stay? Isn't he having some effect on the other disciples? There's no way possible that any one individual that speaks so much, talks so much, got so much to say. Rude as he is, narcissistic as he is, there is no way that he cannot be having an impact on their lives. But Jesus lets him stay. Mark 14, Mark 14, 54. We find Jesus in a place. Caiaphas is questioning Jesus and Peter is holding back. Now, this man who's got so much to say, so many conversations that he has to have about Jesus, but now when Jesus needs him the most, he is at a, a distance. You ever had those folk around you? They do all this talking. They got an answer to everything. But when you need them, they're not there. Peter was not there at the time that Jesus needed him. But it didn't stop Jesus. Keep reading scriptures, and you see, Jesus, you see him, you see Peter, at a place where after all that Jesus has gone through, he is now before the court. Peter is standing on the outside, Mr. Know Everything, Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Got It All Together, and he is doing what Jesus already prophesied he would do, and that is denying him. What do you do when you're in the body of Christ and Jesus needs you and you just don't show up? You've been there, you have 
fulfilled various roles. You've talked about the greatness of God in your life. And you want Jesus to be there for you. But what do you do when Jesus needs you to be there? When's the last time you talked to a sinner? And talk to them about the goodness of God. Talk to them about your salvific experience in Christ. What Christ means in your life. What do you do when you get on the bus, on the train? And you see somebody who is in a condition where they need to hear a word and you are afraid. You were in church yesterday. Demonstrating your love for God by coming to worship. But it's tomorrow now. And what am I going to do today? I am not capable. I'm not perfect. All I can do is sit around and attack what's going on. Because that's what I do best. So here's Peter. Unqualified as he is, these people did not have to present any vitas. They did not have to present any resumes, all they had to do was follow the Lord as Jesus had called them so that they might become kingdom builders with Christ and be able to do those things which Jesus depended on them for. They needed a measure of integrity that was high in order to achieve the goals that God has set for them. And it is not just them, it is for all of us. There must be a sense of a degree of integrity and our belief in who God has called us to be. And although we may not agree with everything, one thing we need to agree about is that if we are going to acknowledge who Jesus Christ is, we cannot have an on and off relationship with him because he does not have an on and off relationship with us. <laughs> Peter is hanging around. Peter is there. And I'm asking, why in the world doesn't Jesus get this man, put this man out? Because when biblical writ comes forth, they're going to tell the story of Peter. Well, the good news is that all of us with our limitations, all of us with our negatives, all of us that have things in our life that needs to be fixed, needs to understand that the reason Jesus has not shut us down or put us out is because he has a purpose for our lives. And all that he goes through, even with Peter, is a preparation process knowing that he will not live forever and knowing that he will eventually die and realizing that he's got to turn it over to somebody. The rest of the disciples probably have skills and abilities, but Jesus doesn't need anybody that's been hiding in the background. He needs somebody who's got the nerve to stand up in the face of the devil and let the devil know what God's expectations are. Somebody say amen. You're trying to hide out. You're trying to squirm. You're trying to lay in the background. You don't want to be seen. You don't want to be known because you don't want folk to put the, the weight on you to try to demonstrate what God has called you to be and so you just want to hang in the background. I'm sure that the other disciples must have been sick of Peter. But when the Lord had to make the appointment, when the Lord had to decide who would be the leader, he looked at this narcissistic, erotic, messed up, keeping his mouth open all the time person and said, you're the one. But it's not just Peter's story. This is your story. Because if it was left to other folk, you wouldn't even be in the church. If it were left to other folk, they would have voted you out a long time ago. 
I don't understand these churches where you got to vote people in and vote people out. Can't nobody vote you in and out but the Lord. Amen. So if you sing louder than anybody, keep on singing. If you pray longer than anybody, keep on praying. If you know you love the Lord so much that every now and then something gets in your spirit and you find yourself having to jump around and shout and give praise for what God has done, don't you worry about them. You tell them, God is getting me ready for something greater. And I may talk more than you want me to. I may say more than you want to hear. But one thing I'm certain about, if the Lord called me in this place and God put me here among those who are his followers, then I understand that it doesn't matter what you think about me. It's an understanding that I know what I believe about God. And because I know what I believe about God, I'm not ready to sit down and, and stop moving in the direction that God wants me to go. So why is Peter still there? Somebody say, turn to Acts. Turn to Acts. And you'll find why Peter was still there. It is a process. Character development is a process. Amen. It starts when your children are young. We need character development in our schools. People are doing things that are so damaging to the future of our children. We need character in the leadership of schools. Amen. And this is not impacting everybody, but something is wrong when children are allowed to be molested by the very people that they trust. And almost weekly, there's a new story. If you want to have something to sh hollow about, you ought to be hollowing about what's happening to the next generation of our children. Because the one thing and the one area we fail in is character development. Uh-huh, y'all quiet. It's okay. That's all right. Character development. The lack of character can be the one thing that destroys your promise, your purpose, and your possibility in life. And if we don't begin to develop character while they are young, even while they don't understand why you have all the rules and the regulations that you give to them in life, that's not your role to allow yourself to come to their level, it is your responsibility to bring them to a higher level so that they do not fail, that they do not fall apart. Let me go on and finish this quickly. Amen. So here we are. Peter denied Jesus, went to sleep on Jesus, talked about Jesus to the degree that Jesus had to call him Satan, but now he's standing up in the upper room, this same Peter that you thought had all these warts on him that you wish had shut up a long time ago. Now he stands in front of the people in the upper room and he begins to preach. And what is his message? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, if Jesus has thrown him out earlier while he was reacting and responding the way he was, he would not be here in the upper room. I just came to tell somebody this morning, you don't have to be perfect because God is trying to perfect you now so that when the day and the season come for you, you will be ready to do what God has called you to do. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because I believe there are some witnesses in the house this morning who can testify. If the record of your past had been the record 
that was supposed to put you in a position of success, you would have been slain a long time ago. But thanks be to God, in spite of your warts, in spite of your failings, in spite of your attitudes, in spite of your behavior, in spite of how you acted out in the world, Jesus saw something in you that the world did not see. And because of what Jesus saw in you, you've been able to prosper and grow and develop and to become who God has called you to be. And the Bible says that Brother Peter was preaching repentance. And while he was preaching repentance, the Holy Spirit showed up. I came to let somebody know this morning, you ought to not push anybody out because God's spirit in your spirit, when God's spirit comes into your life, he begins to change your character. And when God changes your character, God lifts you up to heights and places that you never thought you'd be. Are there some witnesses in the house who can testify this morning? Everybody else uh, thought I was in the wrong crowd. But thanks be to God, Jesus still had his eyes on me and he been developed uh, my character one day at a time. It doesn't come overnight. Sometimes it takes longer to fix somebody than, than, than it does to fix somebody else. But don't you get jealous about them. Don't you get angry about them. Just thank God that he's still working on you. And as long as Jesus is working on you, there's a possibility that God will use you when the right time comes. And so he is preaching, I say. And while he is preaching, 3,000 people come and give their life to the Lord. Don't you know an ex-convict can preach repentance? Don't you know an ex-prostitute can preach repentance? Don't you know an unsaved person who has been walking the streets can preach repentance? Don't you know some kid who got put in jail in his youth but read the Bible every day can preach repentance? So don't you think that just because you got saved, ain't nobody else getting saved. God's working on somebody right now. God's trying to build the character right now. He's trying to turn your life around right now. So stop looking at everybody else and say, God, I need a clean heart. I need a clean spirit. I need you to touch me. And I declare to you that no matter what has happened in my past, I'm ready to go to another level. And I can't get there by myself. I need to to work on my character. I need you to work on my mind. I need you to work on my intellect. I need you to work on my spirit. There is something in me and I know it's got to be in me because I'm not supposed to be here but because of who you are I trust you. I believe you. I know that everything you have and laid out for me will surely come to pass. Is there a witness in the house who can declare this morning if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord I wouldn't be here right now teachers wanted to stow me out throw me out of the classroom I wouldn't be here right now I wouldn't be here right now somebody wanted to put me out of a job they thought my character did not blend in the culture that I had become a part of but thanks be to God I can declare that because Jesus helped me to build my character everybody else says put him out and Jesus said bring him in and when Jesus brings you in he will give you more than you ever thought you could have and so brother Peter up in that place called the upper room kept right on preaching souls kept on being saved on a daily basis people kept on coming and the more he preached the more people came this same man Peter that I thought should have been thrown out is the same man that God is now using 
to build the kingdom of God. I believe God has the power. If he did it once before, he can surely do it again. He's got a commission for you. He's got a direction for your life. He's got a plan for you. He wants you to get ready for what God's about to do in the next iteration, on the next step as he moves you up and begins to bless your life. I declare to you, it is the words of Jesus when he tells Simon he is blessed. He is blessed because the Father in heaven has revealed you to me. I declare this morning, somebody sitting in this house, God has revealed, has been, you have been revealed to God by the Father. And because the Father sees something inside of you, it's about to bring a breakthrough in your life. You didn't expect it, but God is about to do it. Touch yourself. Say, I'm ready for whatever God has for me. I don't care how people feel about my personality. Jesus is working on it. Tell your neighbor, Jesus can work on it. And when Jesus works on it, he gets me ready. Not for living down here on earth, but he gets me ready for heavenly living. He gets me ready so that I might be used to bring Bring people to Christ. He gets me ready. All the world is talking about me, telling me how bad I am, telling me that my character doesn't measure up. But thanks be to God, the ultimate decision doesn't belong to somebody else, but it belongs to the Lord. So no matter what your negatives are, I dare you to stand in the presence of the Lord and say, God, here I am. I need some fixing. I'm messed up. Don't have many friends. Folk are trying to leave me. Nobody want to be bothered with me. They think I talk too much. They think that I am a person who believes I've got more than them. And so they are jealous of me. But thanks be to God, if you stay with Jesus just a little while, if he could do it for Peter, he can surely do it for you. Everybody's got some weaknesses. I say everybody's got some weaknesses. But through Christ, I can be strong. I can do all things through Christ because he strengthens me. He changes my temperament. He changes my attitude. He changes my focus. He changes my direction. I'm ready to do what God has called me to do. If he could do it for Peter, he can surely do it for me. I rejoice in the joy of the Lord who saw weaknesses in my character and blessed me anyhow. Are there some witnesses in the house who know that God saw something in you? Your mother didn't see it. Your father didn't see it. Your pastor didn't see it. Your boss didn't see it. But thanks be to God, you woke up one day and saw that you had had a change in your life and you had to declare it must have been Jesus. It must have been Jesus. Nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. When I got no friend, he is my friend. That's why I celebrate him. That's why I worship him. That's why I love him. Because no matter what the world does for me or to me, I've got confidence in Jesus. You know the name that is above every name is the name of Jesus. Stand up on your feet and say, thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all that you've done for me. I want to thank you because when the world rejected me, you brought me in. I want to thank you 
when they said I'd be nobody. Here I stand in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank you because every morning when I wake up, I know that I didn't get to where I am by myself, but by your power, by your guidance, by your direction, by your sense of purpose for my life. And because you understood me when I couldn't even understand myself, you kept me when other folk wanted to deposit me into the trash cans of life. That's why I'm here this morning because I celebrate you. I celebrate you because I didn't come in the world perfect. I haven't lived in the world perfect. But since I met Jesus, everything in my life has changed. Since I met Jesus, since he saved this whole soul of mine, I can say thank you. I can say thank you. Any thank you for the Lord this morning? Because Jesus, I say Jesus can do for me what no other earthly power can do. I am a new creature in Christ. He controls my mind. He controls my thoughts. He controls my life. And nobody can do more for me than Jesus has done. So keep on talking. Talk with me. Talk to me. Talk about me. But when it's all said and done, I've got but one thing to say. Jesus found me where I was and he brought me to where I am and now I'm looking to the future I don't know how long I'll be on the face of this earth but one thing I know if I keep on doing what God has called me to do I've been promised a seat in the kingdom and when I see Jesus I say when I see Jesus face to face I'm going to thank him because I have no right to be where I am he can structure your character somebody say it takes character Christian character not enough to be a worker in the church if you don't have character Jesus is the builder of character. So the next time somebody in your church talk about you or talk to you because they don't understand what God is doing to you. Don't let them be the block that keeps you from staying connected and have a good relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. You don't see all that's in me, but Jesus does. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Filthy, but he loves me. This mouth has been cursing, but he loves me. I've been in jail and can't seem to find my way since I've got not but, but, but Jesus loves me. came to church when I was a child, read the biblical memory verses and learned them by heart and then forgot, but Jesus still loves me. Sometimes I lose my temper, sometimes I feel like I lost my mind, but Jesus loves me. He's building me. He's building my character. He's building my life. He's making me the better person that he saw in me 
when he called me. And I'm so glad that he did what he did. But I'm not just glad because he did what he did. But I'm glad because I'm still not perfect. And he's still working on my character. Somebody say amen. If you're in the house this morning, you have not received the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going through this world all by yourself. Nobody is there to help you see who you really are. Father is gone. Mother is struggling trying to raise you. And you think nobody cares about you. I want you to know that Jesus cares. You've not received the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trying to make it through the world all by yourself. you got answers for everything. But yet you're constantly depressing. You're constantly going downward rather than upward. Jesus has an answer for you. He wants to build your character. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, run to this altar. The devil's not going to be happy about it. Friends may not be happy about it. Some folk will tell you ain't nothing to that church thing. You tell them, I need Jesus. And I'm not about to leave this place the same way that I can. I'm ready to turn my life around. I've tried doing it by myself. But I've discovered that I can't do it by myself. I need Jesus. If you know you need Jesus, whether you're up on that mezzanine, whether you're down here on the first floor, wherever you are, get up out of your seat right now. Run to this altar. Shake the devil loose. I said shake the devil loose. And tell the devil you can't go with me on this journey. I'm leaving you behind. I'm changing. And I'm moving in the direction that God wants me to go. Yes, Jesus. You're here this morning. You're in the city of New York. You're in the county of Queens. But you don't have a church home. Not a place that you call your spiritual residence. God is speaking to you this morning. God wants your life to change. This is your day. This is your moment. This is your time. God's got something greater for you. God's got more that he wants to put into your life. Oh yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. This is the Jesus of your mother, the Jesus of your father, the Jesus of your grandparents. It is the He is the Jesus who brought them through. The Jesus that will bring you through. I have about five minutes now. Make this the most five, important five minutes of your life. This is your call. Say, yes, Jesus, I am a sinner, but I repent of my sins. Come and fall on this altar today. Pray to the Lord that the Lord will give you the strength not to go back the same way you were, but that the Lord will start building your character so that your decisions in the future will be better than the decisions you have made in the past. This is your day. Some of you young people up there in that balcony, I see you. You know you need Jesus in your life. Some of you who are older who have not found yourself connected to a body in Christ where you believe that the word is being preached and that the spirit of the Lord is in evidence, we welcome you to join the body of Christ here at the Great Allen AME Cathedral. We welcome you this morning not to join a denominational name, but to join Jesus. This is your day. This is your moment. This moment may never come again. You don't know what's going to happen when you leave this place. 
you don't know whether this is the last time you'll be seen on earth. And so today, say yes to the Lord.